I'm Mike Pearl. We're here at the door to answer your Bible questions. You sent these in. So the first one is, and this is by Andrew, says, Are all Christians called to minister? Short answer is yes. Long answer is not so long. Ephesians 4.11 and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We all come into the unity of faith under the knowledge of the Son of God, under a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So he tells us that God gave to the church gifts. These gifts come in the form of men with special ministries, not Everyone is to minister, but not everyone is an evangelist. Not everyone's a prophet. Not everyone is a Bible teacher as such, but everyone is called to minister. Uh, we live in a Western culture where we have a two-tier system. We have the clergy and the laity, and the clergy are professionals hired to do the work of the church. But that's not the way God designed it. God designed it that the work of the church, the work of evangelism, the work of ministry should be done by the body. In fact, it's impossible for a professional man to do the work of the church. Uh, for one thing, he needs to be ministered to. And uh, there's no way that he can keep up with uh, 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people. That requires us looking after one another. 1 Corinthians 16, 15 says, I beseech you, brethren, how the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, that they have addicted, addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So we had some early addicted Christians. These Christians were addicted to ministering to other Christians. That's a great addiction. That is, they, could, they were fidgety and nervous and went through withdrawals if they couldn't be sharing Christ with other Christians. Couldn't be cooking, uh, doing their housework, ministering to the sick, buying an automobile, didn't have them back then, buggy. Uh, whatever the needs were, they were addicted to meeting those needs. Second Corinthians five seventeen. therefore any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things have passed away, all things have become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. So Jesus Christ came and did what was necessary to reconcile the world to himself. But that's no good if someone doesn't take the message of reconciliation. So you and I can do that. We're all, all Christians are supposed to be reconciling the world to Christ with our wet words, our message. Some people say, I let my life be the witness. I want to tell you something. You can go 20 years working with people, letting your life be the witness. And then one day open your mouth and tell them about Jesus. And suddenly they're offended. Or they say to you, I always wondered why you were, you know, better than everybody else. I thought you're just a goody goody. You're not communicating anything other than something about yourself when you let your life be the witness. You need to let your mouth do that. Your, your life doesn't say, Jesus Christ is my Savior. Your life doesn't say, Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord. Your life doesn't say, there's a heaven and a hell. All your life says is, is that maybe you're naive or inexperienced or virgin in terms of the world's culture. So you have to speak up and let people know who and what you are. And then... Uh, I had someone, a young man came to me and says, I don't know if God's called me to the ministry or not. I said, do you want to minister? He said, yes, I do. I said, then volunteer. Don't wait for him to call you. Just go say to him, God, I want to minister. He's never turned anyone down. <laughs> He'll use you, I guarantee you. Matthew 18, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always unto the end of the world. So he says that we're to go, we're to teach, and we're to baptize. Baptism is not something only preachers do. A father can baptize his children. One convert can baptize another. And then Acts 1, 8, and ye have received power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So, you know, somebody asked me, what's the sign of the 
gift of the Holy Ghost. The sign of the gift of the Holy Ghost is that you're a preacher of Jesus Christ, you're a witness of Jesus Christ. It's not speaking in tongues, not the gift of healings. The sign of the Holy Ghost is that you can't help but tell other people about Jesus. You get on an airplane, sit down with somebody, you got to tell them. You uh, walk into a store and there's uh, not a long line, there's just you and the person, you've got to tell them something about Jesus. That's what happens when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Then Acts 4.31, and when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. So that is what happens when you're full of the Lord Jesus Christ, full of the Holy Spirit, is that you speak his word with boldness. So we're all called to minister one way or another. Now, if you're a mother at home with seven children, that's about 90% of your ministry right there. But uh, when you go out to a park and someone says, you have beautiful children, that's when you say, yes, the Lord Jesus Christ has blessed my husband and I. We're training up our children to love God just like our parents trained us up. And we're very thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ for all the blessings he's been in our life. That's easy to say. That's something anyone can say at different times and bear witness of Christ. Okay, that's that question. <laughs> 